G'day guys, Max here from Evidence-Based Football Manager. This is part 10 of my Football Manager training analysis video series. Guys, I've finally done it. Uh, this is the video that you've all been waiting for. Uh, I have finally completed my very own custom training schedule for FM22. Uh, I'm sorry it's taken such a long time, but uh, yeah, I'm finally ready to share the results with you today. All right, guys, you ready? Here we go. That's it, guys. I present to you evidence-based training schedule version 22.1. Yes, I know it, it looks absolutely ridiculous. Uh, in fact, I'm sure it looks nothing like uh, any other football manager training schedule that, that you've ever seen before. But trust me, this schedule works. In fact, its performance is superior to some of the most popular FM22 training schedules out there that you can find online. So stick around and um, I'm going to spend the rest of this video uh, explaining to you how I've come up with such a ridiculous looking uh, training schedule. So you all know that uh, in the past few videos, I've been experimenting with all 47 different types of training sessions in FM22. I won't go over my experiment methodology here because um, I've explained it multiple times before in my previous videos and I'll just be repeating myself all over again. Anyway, after all that experimentation, I've discovered that the player attributes in FM22 can be categorized into three different groups. No, I'm not talking about the technical, mental, and the physical categories. These are the three categories I'm talking about. Uh, you can see them on the screen right now. And these three groups of attributes behave very differently uh, in terms of how they respond to training in the game. So let me go through these uh, attribute groups one by one. The first group, uh, which I'm going to call uh, Group A, uh, contains the following attributes. Crossing, dribble, uh, finishing, first touch, heading, marking, passing, tackle, uh, technical, anticipation, composure, concentration, decision, flair, off the ball, position, and vision. So most of the, uh, the technical and the mental attributes in the, gra uh, in the game belong to uh, Group A. The important thing to note about uh, these Group A attributes is this. When your players don't do any training uh, for an extended period of time, these attributes will slowly start declining over time. Around two thirds of the training sessions in the game will prevent that from happening. And um, the group A attributes will start growing again uh, when the players engage uh, in those training sessions. Let me show you what I mean here. Yeah? So I've got an Excel table here uh, listing all 47 training sessions uh, that's available in FM22. Any growth above 0.2 is highlighted in green, and uh, any drop in value that's greater than negative uh, 0.2 is highlighted in red, uh, which means that uh, there are meaningful changes that occur to, those at to these attributes. The top row here is the control data, i.e. Uh, when the players don't do any training for an entire season. So as you can see, in the absence of training, the group A attributes have all dropped in value. But if you have a look at all these training sessions, about two thirds of these, you know, like uh, attacking, defending, match practice, and so on, uh, these sessions will make these uh, group A attributes uh, start growing. By the way, guys, um, the table that I'm showing you now is slightly different from the, uh, the table that I've been showing you in my previous uh, video series. The table that I've been showing you uh, in my previous videos it was called uh, difference in growth, which means, uh, it, the table showed the amount of growth in the player attributes in relation to the control data. Again, that's the amount of growth that happens when the players don't do any training. But the table that I've got here uh, is called raw growth, which means it just shows you the actual amount of change in these attributes without you know, comparing it to anything else. For example, uh, if you have a look at the, uh, the acceleration attribute, in the absence of training, acceleration grew by 0.44, but when the players did overall training, acceleration, acceleration grew by 0.21. So while acceleration did grow a little bit with uh, overall training, the, uh, the amount of growth is not as high as the control value. In fact, if you have a look at the difference in growth table here, you can see that there is a deficit of about 0.23, in which case, can you really say that the overall training session is effective in boosting the acceleration attribute? Maybe not. And that's the kind of information that's conveyed by this table, difference in growth. 
look, uh, both of these tables, raw growth and difference in growth, uh, both of these tables are important in studying the pattern of player growth in, uh, uh, in this game. So I will be referring to both of these tables back and forth in uh, today's video. And also, um, all these Excel data that you see on the screen right now, you know, they will be uploaded onto my Dropbox, uh, which will be available for public viewing and downloading. So if you guys want to have a look at the, uh, the Excel file yourself, feel free to do so by uh, visiting my Dropbox. I'll provide the link below. Next, we have uh, Group B, which contains the following attributes. Acceleration, agility, balance, pace, uh, stamina, and strength. And Group C contains the following attributes. Corners, free kicks, long throws, penalties, teamwork, work rate, and uh, jumping reach. Group B and C are pretty similar in the way that they respond to training. When your players don't do any training, Group B and C attributes will grow as long as the players are aged uh, 22 or below. However, most training sessions in the game will either slow down or completely halt the growth of these Group B and Group C attributes. Let me show you uh, in the, uh, the Excel table again. You can see uh, in the top row here, Group B and C attributes do grow in the absence of training. But if you have a look at all these training sessions, about half of these cells are not highlighted in green, which means these attributes, uh, they, uh, they didn't show any growth at all. And about half of these cells are highlighted in green, which means uh, they do show some growth. But even for the attributes that do grow, is the amount of growth greater than the control value? Well, that's when we need to turn to this table, the difference in growth table. And as you can see here, most of these table, uh, most of these cells are highlighted in red, meaning that the amount of growth of these, uh, the amount of growth of these group B and C attributes, if any, are not as high as the control values. There are two training sessions in FM22 that can boost the group B attributes more than the control values. Those two sessions are physical and resistance. You can see here that with the physical and the resistance session, these cells are highlighted in green, meaning that the amount of growth is greater than the control value for the group B attributes. On the other hand, uh, there is no training session in the game that can boost the group C attributes more than the control value. So that's actually the only difference between the group B and the group C attributes. With group B, either physical or resistance sessions can do some boosting, um, but with the group C attributes, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do in the game uh, that can boost that can boost uh, the, the growth of uh, group C attributes more than the control values. There are six attributes that I, ha uh, that I haven't mentioned yet, and um, they don't belong to any of these groups, uh, A, B, or C. For example, uh, if you have a look at the long shots and uh, the natural fitness attributes, the range of training sessions that boost these two attributes are completely different from the range of training sessions that boost group A, B, or C. And that's why uh, these, two, uh, these two attributes, long shots and natural fitness, uh, they don't fall into any of these groups A, B, or C. Aggression and bravery are two attributes in the game that don't change uh, over the course of a career, uh, over the course of a player's career in FM22, except maybe when a player sustains a major injury. Determination and, uh, and leadership are not influenced by training, but they do grow in response to other factors in the game, such as uh, match exposure. Now, um, I wanna show you this section here where I've done some uh, data analysis for all these training sessions. Uh, this table is for the raw growth of attributes and um, yeah, doing some data analysis like this, it makes it easier for me to uh, identify which training sessions are better and which sessions are worse. I'll quickly go through uh, two of these columns as examples. So this column here is showing you the total amount of growth uh, for the group A attributes. Uh, by the way, the the absolute values that you see here in this table, uh, they don't carry too much meaning by themselves because they're sort of dependent on the settings that I use for my experiments. What's more important uh, than the absolute values are the relative values. In other words, uh, how all these training sessions rank against each other. So in this column here, uh, the attacking and the defending sessions are the top two winners with the attacking session scoring 6.19 and the defending session scoring uh, 5.44. This column here is showing you the total amount of growth for the group B and the group C attributes. 
Here, the physical and resistance sessions are the top two winners, uh, both of them scoring exactly 9.83, as you can see here. Okay, so far we've talked about how the different attributes in FM22 respond differently to training. And now we are in a position to look for a selection of training sessions in the game that can cover as many player attributes as possible and, you know, boost them as much as possible. And this is my selection, yeah? Attacking, match practice and resistance. Let me explain to you why I've picked these three sessions. First of all, the attacking session is used to target the group A attributes. As I showed you earlier, attacking is the training session that causes, uh, causes the greatest amount of boost for the group A attributes. And that is why, uh, and that's why I picked attacking as one of my choices. Match practice session uh, also targets group A attributes. The total amount of boost uh, exerted by the match practice session is around 2.7 which may not seem very high, but here's the thing, right? Most training sessions in FM22 can be used up to seven times in a single week, which means uh, the results that you see here, uh, they, were obtained, uh, they were obtained when the, when the players in my experiments performed seven training sessions in a single week. But with match practice, you can only use it up to two times in a single week. And the total amount of boost I got was 2.7, uh, just with two sessions in a week, which means the match practice sessions are very cost effective in, uh, in terms of the number of slots that they take up in a training schedule. And that is why I decided to uh, include match practice in, uh, in my training schedule. Another benefit of match practice is that uh, it, it is useful in, uh, in boosting the tactical familiarity of your team, which is something that I've discussed in my previous video, uh, part 9 of this training analysis series. Both attacking and match practice sessions are used to cover the group A attributes, which means I need another training session that can target the group B and group C attributes. I showed you before that uh, physical and resistance sessions, uh, had uh, they had the highest scores in boosting the group B and C attributes. The boosting effects of physical and resistance sessions are exactly the same, but there is one hidden benefit that uh, the resistance session has over the physical session. Resistance session has less impact on the physical conditions of players compared to the physical session, which is, uh, which is also something that I've talked about in the part 9 video. And that is why I decided to go with uh, the resistance session in my training schedule instead of physical. So, attacking, match practice and resistance are the three main ingredients of my training schedule. That's all you need. With these three sessions, you can target most of the attributes that belong to group A, B and C, as well as the two, two remaining attributes, long shots and natural fitness. The only attributes uh, that these three sessions may not cover are marking and tackling. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't come up with a com combination of training sessions that covers every single attribute in the game. The next step is figuring out uh, the ratio between the three sessions, attacking, match practice and resistance. For my training schedule, uh, I'm going to assume two away matches in a single week, uh, with those two matches taking place on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Two matches in a single week will look something like this in the game. Uh, you can see uh, there's an away match uh, happening on Wednesday and another one happening on Saturday. Uh, and each of these matches require two sessions for traveling purposes. Uh, one session the day before the match and another session the day after the match for traveling. Now, I don't, want to, I don't want to fill up every single one of these free slots with training because, you know, you do want to give your players adequate rest time in the game. So I'm going to go with uh, eight training sessions in a single week and um, I'll try to distribute those uh, eight sessions evenly throughout the week. So that's uh, three sessions on Monday, two sessions on Tuesday, one on Thursday, one on Friday and one on uh, Saturday. In terms of the ratio between the three types of sessions, it's going to be three attacking, three, three resistance, and two match practice. The reason is this. Match practice, as I mentioned earlier, is very cost efficient in boosting player growth. So you, want, you do want to use as many match practice sessions as possible. You can use up to two match practice sessions in a single week. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Two match practice sessions in a week. And the remaining six slots, uh, I'm just gonna go like half-half between attacking and resistance. So that's, uh, yeah, three attacking and three resistance sessions. Again, this ratio is based on a two-match week, 
Uh, but for other weeks when you have, you know, like uh, one match a week or even zero matches in a week, you're going to have some extra free slots available for training. So uh, do feel free to throw in some extra attacking or resistance sessions into your schedule and that can benefit your players even further. Do keep in mind that uh, as you add more training sessions into your schedule, the risk of injury goes up for your players. So you don't have to feel compelled to fill up every single free slot uh, that you see in your schedule. Now, just like all good things in life, my training schedule does come with some disclaimers. First of all, uh, I've only considered the growth of outfield players and not goalkeepers. Goalkeepers show a completely different pattern of growth in, uh, in Football Manager, and honestly, they need a separate set of, completely separate set of research. So for the time being, my training schedule only considers uh, the growth of outfield players. Secondly, my experiments were conducted using players between the age of 18 uh, to 21. This is because player growth in Football Manager more or less comes to a halt uh, after the age of 21. Three, my experiments were conducted using the senior team and not the reserve team or the youth team. So don't ask me how players grow when they're placed in the youth team or the reserve team. Four, my experiments were conducted using an editor league uh, where the players don't play any matches throughout the season. This is because um, I wanted to isolate the effects of training from the effects of match experience. Player growth in an actual football manager save can be different, uh, you know, since the players will be playing matches. Five, players with different playing positions respond slightly differently to the various types of training sessions. For example, if you have a look at the attacking session here, you can see that, so I've got a breakdown of uh, all these attributes into the different uh, playing positions, and you can see that uh, the attacking session boosts the long shot attribute for defenders, but not for midfielders or strikers. And if you have a look at the match practice session here, you can see that uh, it boosts the crossing attribute for midfielders and strikers, but not for central defenders. Uh, However, when you're playing Football Manager, it's not possible to have like multiple types of training sessions to cater for like players of different playing positions. You know, you can only have one training schedule at a time for your team, which is why uh, in my experiments, I just grouped all outfield players together in one basket and uh, I tried to uh, construct a training schedule that, that can cater for all, all outfield players, regardless of their playing positions. Six. The main aim of my schedule is to maximize player growth. There are some additional effects to uh, training in Football Manager, such as you know filling up the tactical familiarity of your team, and you know, uh, uh, and also filling up team dynamics of your team. But I didn't really focus on those areas, and this is because I, I think tactical familiarity and team dynamics, you know, they they do fill up eventually, anyways, as you progress through the game. So yeah, that's why I didn't really feel the need to uh, focus on those aspects too much. Okay, uh, what I did next was to compare the performance of my training schedule, PBTS uh, version 22.1, against some of the other popular training schedules that you can find online. So I found four different training schedules for FM22. Uh, I'm not going to name them here because I, I don't think it's necessary, but they are all very popular FM22 training schedules that you can find online using you know Google, YouTube, or uh, on the Steam Workshop. Now, for the, purpose, for the purpose of doing this comparison, I wanted to do it in a more realistic setting. So instead of the, the usual lab environment that I, that I normally use for my uh, Football Manager experiments, um, I decided to uh, go with Estoril, uh, which is a club in the Portuguese Premier League. So, you know, it makes the, uh, the comparison more realistic. The experiment method is uh, pretty straightforward. So I'm in charge of Estoril, you know, as you can see here. Uh, so I go into the training page and um, I apply the training schedule, uh, uh, my own training schedule, EBTS, uh, for an entire season, as you can see uh, right now. Then what I do is I simulate the game until the end of the season. And uh, when the season ends, uh, I, rec I record the growth of the, uh, the Estoril players, including the growth in CA and the growth in player attributes. As always, one simulation is never enough, so uh, I repeat the exact, exact same simulation five times and um, I calculate the average values of those results. Once that's done, um, I do the exact same thing for the four other training schedules, um, 
so that you know I can compare the performance of these uh, five different training schedules. And let's go straight to the results. So I've got a table here listing the raw growth of all these attributes. The top row here is my own schedule, EBTS, and I'm comparing it against uh, these four other training schedules. Now I'm going to use three main criteria to, uh, in order to compare the performance of these uh, five different schedules. The first criteria is the amount of CA that's gained by the players over the course of a season. For, so for this criteria, my schedule, EBTS, has ranked number one uh, with a score of uh, 8.1. The second criteria that I'm using is the total amount of attribute gain across all attributes. So for this criteria, my schedule has scored 11.2 and um, there's actually another session here that also scored exactly 11.2. So it's a tie between these two schedules. The third criteria that I'm using is the number of attributes that grow, uh, that grew. Uh, this criteria sounds similar to the second criteria, but the second criteria is the amount of growth, whereas uh, this criteria is the number of player attributes that grew uh, over the course of a season. So with this criteria, um, my schedule uh, actually came second. Uh, so my schedule EBTS, it boosted 25 different types of player attributes, whereas this one has boosted 29 attributes. So it seems that while my training schedule is pretty good at boosting the CA and the attributes of players, it may not be the best at having that growth evenly distributed throughout all the attributes. I guess it's difficult to catch two stones at the same time, isn't it? You know, stimulating the growth as much as possible and uh, having that growth evenly distributed. Uh, yeah, it's difficult to achieve both. Look, my work is not finished. Uh, there's a reason why my training schedule is called version 22.1. It's so that there could be other versions uh, and updates in the future. So stay tuned on this channel and uh, yeah, I will let you know when I release an updated version of my training schedule. Again guys, my schedule EBTS version 22.1 will be uploaded on my Dropbox, so feel free to download it. Uh, try using it in your own saves and yeah, do leave uh, some feedbacks in the comments. Okay, this is an extra segment that I'm adding a few days after I did the main recording. Um, now it's 9th of September uh, here in Australia and uh, FM23 just got announced. Well, obviously, really exciting news for us football manager lovers. And uh, But at the same time, I, I'm kind of a bit disappointed at myself for not finishing this video early enough. I was kind of hoping to uh, have this video released before the announcement for FM23, but um, yeah, I guess it's I'm too late by a few days. Look, uh, FM22 is approaching the end of its lifespan, uh, and I, I wish my training schedule was released at least a little bit earlier so that more people could have used it for a, for a longer period of time. But you know what, that doesn't mean that there's no value to uh, all the work that's gone into it. The research that I've done uh, in the past few months, is it's really given me a lot of insight into how the game works and uh, yeah, it's definitely been more than worthwhile. When FM20, when FM23 comes out, I will have to do an update on the training schedule and uh, yeah, I will upload the updated training schedule for FM23 uh, when the new game comes out. Anyway, that's it for today's video. As always, keep those comments coming, uh, positive comments, negative comments, neutral comments, it doesn't matter. I, I welcome all kinds of feedbacks. The more feedbacks, the better, yeah? All right, guys, take care, and I'll see you all next time.